Let us pray. Gracious Father, we humbly come before you now. Lord God, we come with humble hearts and we come with bowed down heads and on bended knees. Lord God, we thank you for being the great and awesome benefactor of all mankind. Lord God, I thank you that we seek after you. Oh God, not just because of your benefits, but Lord God, we want the benefactor. And we believe, oh God, that if we have you, we have all the blessings that come with you. Now, Father God, we pray that you look upon this nation and all nations and have mercy upon us, oh God, for thy name's sake. Lord God, look upon this listening audience that they will receive the word that you have for them on this day. This we pray and we thank you. In Christ Jesus' name, amen and amen. I thank you for tuning in with us. Uh, we are on our website. We are also on uh, YouTube. And we are also on Facebook. And we pray that uh, the Lord will speak to your heart and that you will be blessed. On today, we are talking from the thought strength for turbulent times. And the subtopic is Jesus is coming. And I want you to, uh, as much as you possibly can, uh, stay tuned with us throughout this, uh, these Bible classes because uh, we want you to get the whole picture. Now, I appreciate all of you for tuning in with us uh, from day to day. We appreciate all of your uh, comments that you'll share with us, your particular criticisms. And I want you to know that uh, we take all of them to heart because we are trying to improve on a regular basis. I want to take this time also to thank our media ministry for doing such a wonderful job. Um, they have worked hard on putting these uh, lessons together, or should I say, these presentations together, and I thank our media ministry. Um, so tune in and stay with us uh, as much as you can. Now, this coming Friday from 3 p.m. to 7 p.m., we have partnered with the American Red Cross to do a blood drive. The American Red Cross is in dire need for blood to help during critical times as these. Now, we want you to feel free to come by and donate. We are located at 2200 Fairview Road, Stockbridge, Georgia. Also, this coming Saturday, April 4th, 2020, our Agape Ministries will host Grief Share online. To participate in the group sessions, call 720-835-5037 and enter code 01723. That is 720-835-5037 and enter code 01723. For assistance, feel free to call our primary grief share coordinator, which is Sister Verlene Brown. She may be reached at 678-591-7323. Now, in our Bible classes, I invite you to come and let us reason together. Oh yes, come let us reason together, putting our hearts and our minds together so that we can plan a course of action that will benefit us now and in the world to come. After all, there is a hereafter. We find in Hebrews chapter 9, and I will give you time to get that scripture, Hebrews chapter 9, verse 27 through 28. And we are reading from the NLT uh, version, and most of our scriptures will be coming 
from that version on tonight. It reads like this. And just as each person is destined to die once and for all. Let me, let me say that again. It is destined for a person who wants to die. And after that comes judgment. So there is a hereafter. So don't let anyone fool you that, amen, when you die, that's the end of the story. That is not the end of the story. So also Christ was offered once for all time as a sacrifice to take away the sins of many. He will come again. Remember that. He will come again. That's our subtopic, amen, throughout this series. Jesus is coming. He will come again, not to deal with our sins, but to bring salvation to all who are eagerly waiting for him. You know, sometimes I think just like an eagle stirs the nest and wants the little eaglets to get out of the nest and begin to fly. I think sometimes God, Jesus Christ, kind of shake things up for us and make us a little uncomfortable so that we won't get too comfortable with living here, but we'll look forward to our heavenly home. Uh, our theme, as I mentioned earlier, is strength for turbulent times. Think about that. Think about the times that we are going through right now. Do you need strength for these times? Do you need God to help you deal with what's going on? I cannot speak for you, but I can say for myself, I definitely need the help of God. Let's take a look at what that word turbulent means. It means unsettled and stormy. Unsettled and stormy. It reminds me of 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 1 through 15. Turn with that to that, if you will. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1 through 5. Now, I am sure that you are familiar with this scripture, but I want to read it, and you can follow along with me. And I want you to see if that scripture speaks to what we are dealing with right now. It reads on this wise. You should know this, Timothy, that in the last days, there will be very difficult times. For people will love only themselves and their money. They will be boastful and proud. Anything ringing a bell yet? Scoffing at God, disobedient to their parents, and ungrateful. They will consider nothing sacred. And oh, how I see people nowadays, the way they treat the house of the Lord, the way they uh, talk about the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. I definitely believe that we are in the last days. And this scripture is as fresh and new and up to date as tomorrow's newspaper. They will be unloving and unforgiving. They will slander others and have no self-control. They will be cruel and hate what is good. Nowadays, people are calling good evil and evil good. They will betray their friends, be reckless, be puffed up with pride, and love pleasure rather than God. They will act religious, but they will reject the power that could make them godly. Stay away from people like that. Wow. Stay away from people like that. How many times have a good friend, uh, your husband or your wife, your parents, say something to that nature? You need to stay away from that person. They don't mean you any good. 
But watch this. My question to you is, uh, have you taken that good advice? How many of you are going to take that sound advice from Apostle Paul? How many took that sound advice from your friend that love you dearly, from your parents that love you dearly? Someone once mentioned to me that saved boys and girls were boring. Let me say that again. Someone told me that saved boys and girls were boring. Now, I wonder what is it that you want to do that a born again believer does not want to do that is not boring. I wonder. I wonder. Listen, we read in 2 Timothy about perilous times. Now, the word perilous means full of danger and risk. Full of danger and risk. It also means defenseless. And I thought about this unseen enemy that we are fighting right now. This enemy has come in among us and taken thousands away from us. And I'm told that there is no cure. We have been rendered somewhat defenseless against this enemy. But that's what perilous means. And the Bible says that we are in these perilous times. It, it speaks about what is going on right now. So please don't tell me that the Bible is outdated, that the Bible is irrelevant. It is as up to date as tomorrow's newspaper. Oh, yes, it is. And I praise God for it. We find in St. Matthew chapter 24, verse 37 through 39. Listen, amen, what the word of God teaches us. That is St. Matthew chapter 24, verses 37 through 39. Take a, take a second, turn to it. St. Matthew chapter 24, verse 37 through 39. Listen to what the word of God says, and I want you to think about this. Think about what the word of God is saying. When the Son of Man returns, Jesus is coming. I cannot say it long enough, and I cannot say it loud enough. Jesus is coming. When the Son of Man returns, it will be like it was in the, day, in the days of Noah or Noah's day. And let's see now, how was it in Noah's day, according to the Bible? In those days before the flood, the people were enjoying banquets. They were living it up, drinking it up. Oh yes, they were doing virtually anything they were big enough to do. Parties, weddings, right up to the time that Noah entered the ark. People didn't realize what was going on, what was going to happen until the flood came and swept them all away. Now listen, think about that. The people didn't realize what was going to happen until the flood came and swept them all away. <clears throat> That is the way it will be when the Son of Man comes. Now, I, I, I want to think about that a little bit. My question is, why didn't they know? Wasn't Noah preaching and telling the people what was going to happen? I want you to know today that we can know what God is up to. Oh, yes, we can. Why? Because it's written in the word of God. Jesus is coming. But just like it was in the days of Noah, people are not listening. They are not tuned in. 
Too many have their heads buried in the sand with their hands over their ears and don't want to hear what God is saying. But he's still talking. Are you listening? You don't have to be in the I don't know what's going on. You can be in the know because God's word is informing us. Oh, yes, it is. <clears throat> we find in Genesis chapter 6, verse 3, it reads on this wise. Genesis chapter 6, verse 3. I'll give you a second to kind of turn to that. Genesis chapter 6, verse 3. Remember now, the word of God said, just as it was in the days of Noah, <clears throat> so will it be. In the last day before Jesus come, watch this. The word of God tells us, then the Lord said, my spirit will not put up with humans for such a long time, for they are only mortal flesh. In the future, their normal lifespan will be no more than 120 years. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Keep listening. Keep listening because I believe the word of God is going to get your attention. Keep listening. Stay tuned in. Listen to what God's word tell us in verse 5 through 8 of the 6th chapter. Come on down to verse 5. All right, you have it. Very good. The Lord observed the extent of of human wickedness on the earth and saw that everything they thought or imagined think about that everything they thought or imagined was consistently and totally evil that's how it was in the days of Noah I don't think it's much different during these days so what was the Lord's response to that wickedness? What was the Lord's response during that time? And that may give us a hint as to what God is going to do in our time. So the Lord was sorry he had ever made them and put them on the earth. It broke God's heart. Mm. I don't ever want to break God's heart. After all that he has done for me on a regular basis. And I say to you today, the goodness of God, the goodness of God ought to lead you to repentance. The goodness of God ought to lead you to throw up your hands and say, I yield my will to the will of God. Verse seven says, and the Lord said, I will wipe this human race I have created from the face of the earth. God must have been really upset. Ooh. Ooh, I don't want him to get that upset with me. He said, I will wipe this human race from off the earth. Wow. Hallelujah. Yes. And I will destroy every living thing. All the people, the large animals, the small animals, the one that just run along is so scurrying along real quick and fast on the ground. And even the birds of the sky. I am sorry I ever made them. Lord have mercy. God must have been really upset with sin that was going on. But Noah. Say that with me if you don't mind. But Noah, thank you. But Noah found favor with God. That humbles my heart. And let's see what resulted as a result of God finding favor in at least one human being. Now, let's look at this word favor for a quick second. Favor, gracious kindness, friendly regard, 
shown by another, especially by a superior. I say that God definitely was a superior to Noah. But God showed Noah some gracious kindness. God was friendly toward Noah. Aren't you glad for the favor of God toward undeserving humanity? Who among us deserves God's favor? I thank God it's a gift from God because none of us deserve it. We couldn't work for it. But I thank God. All of humanity could have been wiped off the face of the earth. But thank God for favor. Can you thank God for favor today? Go ahead on and thank him right now. You can praise God right where you are sitting, right where you are standing. Praise him right now. You don't need an audience to praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We find in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1 through 5. And listen carefully, because I believe you might want to dance on this. You might want to get up and cut a step before, before God. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1 through 5. Once you were dead because of your disobedience and your many sins. That's talking about us now. Seeking you identify. You used to live in sin. Who among us never lived in sin? We were born in sin. We were shapen in iniquity. Hallelujah. Just like the rest of the world, obeying the devil, the commander of the powers, amen, in the unseen world. He is the spirit at work in the hearts of those who refuse to obey God. Mm. Remember, that was us. All of us used to live that way. <clears throat> Following the passionate desires and inclinations of our sinful nature. By our very nature, we were subject, amen, to God's anger. Mm. I don't want God to be mad at me like he was with people during Noah's time. But because we were all sinners and disobeyed God, we too was subject to the anger of God, just like everyone else. Oh, yes. Mm. But Lord, have mercy. Look at verse 4. And just, just repeat those first two words. But God. <clears throat> but God. Hallelujah. That's enough to make our hearts melt. But God is rich in mercy. And he loved us so much that even though we were dead because of our sins, he gave us a life when he raised Christ from the dead. Oh, yes. It is only by God's grace that you and me have been saved. Father, I thank you. Thank you, Jesus. I am reminded of Luke chapter 130. In regards to Mary, the mother of Jesus, the angel began to speak to her and said, don't be afraid. Amen. Don't be afraid, for you have found favor with God. Now think about those powerful words. Don't be afraid. You have found favor with God. Now, if you have found favor with God, even in these turbulent times and perilous times, there is no need to worry and there is no need to be afraid. If you have found favor with God, why worry? I heard someone say, if you pray, why worry? If you worry, why I pray. Today, church, I'm praying. I'm trusting in God. 
I pray for favor. I want you to remember these words. Amen. G-G-I. God got it. G-G-I. God's got it. I pray that we say something here today that will bless your heart. And don't forget to stay tuned in because we, this is a series and we're going to build on what we started here today. Let us close in prayer. Gracious Father, we thank you. We praise you. We adore you. We magnify you now. Lord God, we thank you for undergirding us. Oh, hallelujah. Lord God, we thank you for being our sail in turbulent waters. Lord God, we thank you for being our compass. Oh God, that navigate us and guide us through these tough times. Lord God, hallelujah, my faith is in you. Oh God, I trust in you. I thank you for your grace. I thank you for your mercy. I thank you for favor. Lord God, help us to know, oh God, what you're up to by reading your word and obeying your word. And dear Father, help us to hear those words. Come unto me, all those that are labor and are heavily laden, and I will give you rest. Today, I thank you, O oh God, for giving us the opportunity to be born again and to be baptized in water in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. That so when you come, we'll be prepared to go back with you. This we pray and we thank you. In Christ Jesus' name, amen and amen. God bless you.